I hadn't heard from my best friend Haley or seen her in school since the falling out we had over her boyfriend. I tried to tell her it was just a big misunderstanding, but she was so hurt and upset, she refused to hear my side of the story. I tried to explain that he kissed me by surprise and I pushed him away just as suddenly, but all she could see was red and she berated me relentlessly, like it was all my fault. I eventually fired back in self-defense, which led to us both saying hurtful things to one another before it was all said and done. That was three days ago, and I've been sick about it ever since. What made things worse was today was Halloween. It was the one time of year that we looked forward to spending the entire night at my house, passing out candy to kids, and watching scary movies until we either couldn't nerve any more horror, or until my parents stacked it in for my uncle's legendary costume parties. Halloween was the one night we blended fun and fear with the added bonus of having no parents around to monitor us. But our three-year tradition was in jeopardy now. And it was all because of some jock with the loose tongue and ass breath who I didn't even like. For three days I waited for Haley to reach out to me and for three days I got nothing. I checked my phone almost every 10 minutes expecting to see a text message or a missed call. Nothing. The guilt I felt from the cruel words I lashed her with, along with the gravity of the situation, made me feel like I needed to be the bigger person and salvage our friendship, and our night, before it was too late. I didn't have the nerve to call, so I decided to text. That was mainly how we communicated anyway. I mean, it was easier and quicker. I kept it simple and direct. A simple, hey, was the probe I was going to send out to test the waters. If she didn't respond, then I know she was still mad at me and I'd have my work cut out for me. If she responded, then I know she cooled off and was open for conversation. I hesitated for a split second, but eventually forced myself to press send. I expected a long wait, but to my surprise, I received a text back almost immediately. It read, Who is this? Surprised by her response, I texted back in all caps, Really? I sent another message. Is this how you want to play it? Seconds later, my phone came to life with a message. It was from Haley, and it read, Not playing. Erased a lot of numbers in the last few days. Yours must have been one. Though it hurt to admit, that made sense. I can't remember how many times I erased people who annoyed me from my phone and didn't recognize their numbers when they tried to contact me days later. I texted back. It's Grace. Seconds after that, I sent another text. I asked her, you still hate me? I waited nervously for a response. It took a while for an answer to come back. When it finally did, it read, any reason why I shouldn't? I quickly began my lengthy reply. I typed, like I said before, Josh kissed me. I didn't expect or want him to. You're my BFF, Haley. I never do anything like that to you. I hate I said all those mean things to you, but you said some pretty nasty stuff too. I just really want my best friend back. She messaged back, you never lost me. Reading that lightened my heart and brought a smile to my face. My worst fears had been erased. I texted back, so you still coming over tonight? I picked out the creepiest movies on Hulu and my mom and dad are already gone. Only thing missing now is you and pizza. It took a minute for her to respond. When she did, she said, I'll be there, but only if you let me buy the pizza. My peace offering. Haley must have felt as bad as I did because she never hoped to pay for anything. I said sure, and then she told me to send her my address so she could order the pizza online and have it delivered. That way it'd be waiting for her when she got here. I texted my address and waited for a response. Minutes went by, but no message ever came back from her. I started watching a marathon of ghost adventurers, occasionally answering the door for trick-or-treaters and dumping a handful of candy into their bags. I'd gone through an entire episode and two bowls of candy when my phone alerted me to a new message. It was from Haley. She was letting me know she was only a couple of minutes away. By now, day had turned into night and watching ghost adventurers had primed me for some real terror. I messaged her back saying I was going to leave the front door open for her. I ran upstairs to use the bathroom, then grabbed my plush throw out of my bedroom. I was halfway down the stairs when I heard my phone ring. I had accidentally left it on my bed. 
I deliberated right then and there on if I felt like jogging back up the stairs to go get it. And I thought about it being my parents and how they'd probably freak out and come home early if I didn't respond to their text. Not wanting that, I decided to go back up. By the time I reached the top of the stairs, I could hear the front door opening. I knew it was Haley, so I yelled down to her. I'll be right there. I just had to grab my phone first. I heard the front door close by the time I made it to my bedroom. I picked up my phone and saw a new message alert from a number I didn't recognize. The message read, ready to be friends again? I was taken back at first, but figured it must have been the wrong number and that's how I sent the reply. I didn't think anything further about it as I headed into the hallway, but another message stopped me dead in my tracks. It read, this isn't Grace. I found it weird that they knew my name. I responded back, this is Grace. Who is this? I waited in my bedroom door for a response. One came back seconds later. I could feel my forehead tighten and my eyes narrow as I read Haley's name. Why would she be texting me from my living room and where did this brand new number come from? Then it dawned on me that this must have been some kind of Halloween prank. Probably just a cheap trick by someone I went to school with trying to freak me out. I smile as I message back. Nice try, but the phone number gave you away. I made it to the top of the stairs and was about to walk down when another message came through. I yelled down to Haley. I'll be down in a sec. You won't believe what somebody just tried to pull. I opened the new message and it read. I changed my number after our fight. Didn't want you or that creep calling me. I stayed home the last two days to cool off. I know it wasn't your fault, and I'm sorry for yelling at you. I got an eerie chill as I read that message. It sounded a lot like Haley, but how could that be? My phone dinged with another message. So am I still invited over, or are we breaking tradition? Fed up with the games and becoming a little freaked out, I texted back. Joke's over, loser. Stop texting me. I began my descent downstairs, clearing several steps when my phone rang. I checked the call ID. It was the same number that had been texting me. I angrily answered, look, I don't know who this is, but Grace, it's me, a familiar voice cut me off. I knew her voice just as well as I knew my own mother's. Haley, I asked. She answered, yeah, it's me. When I realized her voice was only coming through the phone and not from downstairs, I asked, Where are you? I'm home, she said. I've been home all day. And you really did change your number? I nervously asked. Yeah, three days ago. Why? What's the matter? My heart began to race. My hands started to tremble and my legs became so unsteady I thought I was going to collapse. I could hear heavy footsteps slowly moving downstairs. I was terrified out of my mind. If Haley was at her house, then who did I just let into mine? Just then, a man's dirt-covered boots walked into view at the bottom of the stairs. I screamed for Haley to call the police as he charged towards me, rushing up the stairs faster than I could react, his eyes wide and crazed. I could hear Haley frantically yelling back at me that she was calling the cops. They wouldn't make it in time. 